Hello everyone, this is Mr. Regner, and I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I loved story time. I always loved to go to the library and hear new stories, new books, and so I thought I would bring a little story time to our math class. So I'm going to be reading a story today called Math Curse. Now it sounds like a scary story, and to be honest, it kind of is, but it's also reality. So we're going to take a look at our book, Math Curse, today. And I think what we're gonna find is that math really is everywhere. It's really a cool thing. Uh, so let's check it out. There's an awesome cover page, some really cool drawings in here as well. On Monday, in math class, Mrs. Fibonacci says, you know, you can think of almost everything as a math problem. On Tuesday, I start having problems. I wake up at 7.15. It takes me 10 minutes to get dressed, 15 minutes to eat my breakfast, and one minute to brush my teeth. Hey, I wonder what time it is now. Suddenly, it's a problem. If my bus leaves at 8 o'clock, will I make it on time? How many minutes in one hour? How many teeth in one mouth? I look in my closet, and the problems get worse. I have one white shirt, three blue shirts, three striped shirts, and that one ugly plaid shirt my uncle Zeno sent me. How many shirts is that altogether? How many shirts would I have if I threw away that awful plaid shirt? When will Uncle Zeno quit sending me such ugly shirts? I'm getting a little worried. Everything seems to be a problem. Oh boy. Check out the illustration there, that's really cool. I take the milk out from my cereal and I wonder, how many quarts in a gallon? How many pints in a quart? How many inches in a foot? How many feet in a yard? How many yards in a neighborhood? How many inches in a pint? How many feet in my shoes? I don't even bother to take out the cereal. I don't want to know how many flakes in a bowl. Mrs. Fibonacci has obviously put a math curse on me. Everything I look at or think about has become a math problem. I try to get on the bus without thinking about anything. But there are five kids already on the bus. Five kids get on at my stop, five more get on at the next stop, and five more get on at the last stop. True or false? What is the bus driver's name? Mrs. Fibonacci has this chart of what month everyone's birthday is in. Here's this chart down here, kind of hard to see. It's a bar graph. Which month has the most birthdays? Which month has the fewest? Why doesn't February have a W? Don't you think this chart looks sort of like a row of buildings? Do you ever look at clouds and think they look something like something else? What does this ink blot look like to you? Hmm. All these questions. The whole morning is one problem after another. There are 24 kids in my class. I just know someone is going to bring cupcakes to share. We sit in four rows with six desks in each row. What if Mrs. Fibonacci rearranges the desks to make six rows, eight rows, three rows, two rows? I count the 24 kids in our class again, this time by twos. Jake scratches his paper with one finger. How many fingers are in our class? Casey pulls Eric's ear. How many ears are in our class? The new girl, Kelly, sticks out her tongue at me. How many tongues are in our class? I'm about to really lose it. 
when the lunch bell rings. All these problems. Unfortunately for me, lunch is pizza and apple pie. Well, that sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, lunch is pizza and apple pie. Each pizza is cut into eight equal slices. Each pie is cut into six equal slices. And you know what that means? Fractions. If I want two slices of pizza, should I ask for A, one-eighth, B, two-eighths, C, two slices of pizza. What is another way to say one half of an apple pie? A, two sixths, B, three sixths, C, la morte de una tarte aux pradas. I don't know what that means either. Or which tastes greater, one half of a pizza or one half of an apple pie? We haven't studied fractions yet, so I take 12 carrot sticks, three at a time, and eat them two at a time. In the afternoon, every subject is a problem. Social studies is a geography problem. The Mississippi River is about 4,000 kilometers long. An M&M is about one centimeter long. There are 100 centimeters in a meter and 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Estimate how many M&Ms it would take to measure the length of the Mississippi River. Estimate how many M&Ms you would eat if you had to measure the Mississippi River with M&Ms. Be honest, that's a lot. Bonus! Can you spell Mississippi without any M&Ms? It is hard to do. English is a word problem. If mail plus box equals mailbox, does lipstick minus stick equal lip? Does tuna fish plus tuna fish equal forna fish? Phys ed is a sports problem. In 1919, Babe Ruth hit 29 home runs. He batted 322 and made $40,000. In 1991, the average Major League Baseball player hit 15 home runs, batted 275, and made $840,000. Circle the correct answer. Babe Ruth is less than the average modern baseball player, or Babe Ruth is greater than the average modern baseball player, or Babe Ruth is equal to the average modern baseball player. In art, we finally get to relax with a connect the dot picture. <sighs> Here is my picture. Too bad it turns out to be a connect the ancient Mayan numerals picture. Math is just, just a total problem. Mrs. Fibonacci says there are many ways to count. She asks us to give some examples. Russell counts on his fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Molly says two, four, six, eight, ten. Mrs. Fibonacci says I always count. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. But on the planet Tetra, kids only have two fingers on each hand. They count one, two, three, ten. And on the planet Binary, kids only have one finger on each hand. They count one, ten. Assuming we have ten fingers. What are the next five numbers in each sequence above? Do you think Mrs. Fibonacci has been to the planet Tetra? How would you bowl if you lived on the planet Binary? These are big questions, and I'm demanding answers. Oh no, oh no. 
We are just about to go home when Rebecca remembers the special birthday cupcakes that her mom made. There are 24 kids in the class. Rebecca has 24 cupcakes. So what's the problem? Rebecca wants Mrs. Fibonacci to have a cupcake too. Everyone is going crazy trying to figure out what fraction of a cupcake each person will get. I'm the first to figure out the answer. I raise my hand and I tell Mrs. Fibonacci, I'm allergic to cupcakes. Boom. Everyone, 24, believes me and gets one cupcake. And no one, zero, has to figure out fractions. That's what I call taking one for the team right there. I stagger out of school. I'm a math zombie now. I have to find something to break this math curse. I decide to try chocolate. My favorite candy bar is usually 50 cents, but guess what? Today it's on sale for 50% off. That's negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times AC divided by two A where A equals the number of letters in your first name, B equals your age, and C equals your shoe size. I decide to buy licorice instead. I pull out my money. I have a $5 bill, a $1 bill, a quarter, and a penny. George Washington is on both the quarter and the $1 bill. Abraham Lincoln is on both the penny and the $5 bill. So which is true? One Washington equals 25 Lincolns. Five Washingtons equal one Lincoln. One Washington equals 100 Lincolns. Or one Lincoln equals 20 Washingtons. Don't forget to show your work. Extra credit. How do you think Thomas Jefferson feels about all of this? It's a fair point. I am now a raving math lunatic. What if this keeps up for a whole year? How many minutes of math madness would that be? What's your problem, says my sister? 365 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes, I said. Dinner brings no relief. While passing the mashed potatoes, mom says, what your father says is false. Dad helps himself to some potatoes and says, what your mother says is true. I think about that for a minute. What if mom says, or if what mom says is true, then what dad says is false. And if what mom says isn't true, then what dad says isn't false. But that can't be true because he says that what mom says is true. And she says that what he says is false. Can that be true? I think about that. Then I think about it some more, and then I think I'd better go to bed. I undo eight buttons plus two shoelaces. I subtract two shoes. I multiply times two socks and divide by three pillows to get five sheep. Remainder one, which is all I need to count to before I fall asleep. Then the problems really begin. I dream I'm in a trapped, I'm trapped in a room with no doors, no windows. The room is covered with a lifetime of problems. I have only one piece of chalk. How do I get out? I'm about to give up and die when the answer to my problem comes to me. Fractions. I break the chalk in half. Then I put the two halves together. One half plus one half equals, you guessed it, one whole. How do we get out of the room? With the one hole. I put the hole on the wall and jump out. I'm free! <sighs> I wake up Wednesday morning at 7.15. It takes me 10 minutes to get dressed, 15 minutes to eat my breakfast, and one minute to brush my teeth. My bus leaves at 8 o'clock. What time will I be ready? 7.41. No problem. I've broken the math curse. 
I can solve any problem, and life is just great. Until science class, when Mr. Newton says, you know, you can think of almost everything as a science experiment. The end. That has been the math curse. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but I hope you enjoyed the story, and I hope that anytime you have a math curse struck upon you, you can find it within yourself to break free and solve any math problem you see. Have a great day, everybody.